Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. My name is Ryan Buck. In this tutorial, we will be reviewing the design staff hour estimation form for tab 26, the landscape plans. The forms were updated in September of 2023, and this is uh, the updated version of tab 26 in 2023. It's our new calculated version is what we're calling it, and I'll show you how we're going to use it. Um, as you can see, you've got some information to fill out at the top. Over to the right-hand side is how to use this form. There's a link to a library of video tutorials, including this one, for each tab, as, as well as some instructions, which I will be covering in this video tutorial. At the bottom right is my contact information. Please um, feel free to reach out with any questions um, you have or uh, if the tab is uh, not working correctly or if you have any suggestions to improve um, these forms for your use, uh, please feel free to reach out and let me know. All right, so let's dig in and uh, I'll show you how this form is intended to be used and we'll quickly walk through each task. So um, the way the new calculator form works is you would enter in project parameters uh, about your project based on the scope of, uh, of services. So uh, you would enter in your number of units. Um, units uh, could be just a, a lump sum. Um, yes, this task is used, or maybe it is a length or area of a project or a quantity uh, of some sort. And then there's also um, a complexity uh, to each task that could be used or maybe the overall project complexity. So you essentially tell the form a little bit about your project and it will um, do a, an equation and calculate an estimated number of staff hours it recommends based on established staff hour guidelines. Those guidelines are published on our web scope and staff hour website uh, along with these forms um, so you can look into more uh, details and they have more definitions uh, of how it gets to this calculated estimated value. This calculated estimated value is uh, a, used as a starting point point by the department and the consultant um, for their estimation, they have to determine if the calculated value is appropriate for their specific project. If it is, they can um, carry it on in their estimate. If it's not, uh, they can recommend increasing the hours or decreasing the hours of the calculated value um, so it would be appropriate for that project. And the department and consultant would negotiate and um, come to an agreement on what the appropriate amount of staff hours is for that task for that project. Uh, anything in red font or a red shaded box is um, for the user to input uh, a value. Anything uh, in, in black font would be um, either text or a calculation um, that is not meant to be edited. And any gray, um, is there's no input as well uh, a gray shaded box. So let's get started and walk through this and I'll show you kind of how it works. So we'll start with um, task 26.1, which is the key sheet and the signature sheet right here. So if you click on the box of the units and it, it kind of gives you a prompt uh, and a text box of what to input. So is a key sheet required? Yes equals one and no equals zero. So if you have a key sheet, you would put in a one right here and you can see the calculator is going to work and recommends four hours for the key sheet. And then is the signature sheet required? Um, again, if it is, you'd put a one and it goes to work here. Now there is a note if a key sheet is not required, then no hours will be given for a signature sheet. So if you had zero for the key sheet and one for the signature sheet, it wouldn't recommend any hours. You've got to have the key sheet uh, in order to have a signature sheet. All right. So um, up at the top right here, it asks a question, what is the complexity of the planting plan? And it says, see the landscape guidelines. So this would be your first step when starting to fill out the project parameters. Um, 
the landscape guidelines are down here and I'll show you how to use those. You can click here and they have this matrix to kind of help determine what the overall complexity of the planning plan would be. So you go step by step with the planning palette first, right, the element. Here's the complexity guidelines and you use this shaded box, same color shaded box with the drop down. And you would select simple, standard, or complex based on the def definitions for the project. Is it just palms and trees only, palms, trees, and shrubs, or is it a specialized design? We'll just say standard for this project example. Then you'd say the roadway type. So you go down and fill out all of these questions. We'll say we have a roadway widening, and it recommends two roadway elements. Uh, we'll just say that we have just minor intersections and uh, roadway locations. Oh, this uses the uh, context classifications. We'll say that we're in uh, a standard context classification. Stakeholder participation. We'll say that for this particular example, we have uh, complex lots of stakeholders. And outdoor advertising. In this case, we'll say that we don't have any and it'll be zero. So it'll uh, tabulate this based on what you told it about the project, give it a point value, and the point value uh, rating scales right here. And it'll suggest a mid-level complexity project based on these. Again, you'll have to determine if that's appropriate. If it's not for your project, you could make it a low or a high complexity project. But with that information, you can come back over here. You select this box and we were a mid-level project. So we'll select mid. This is our overall kind of project complexity and it will um, go ahead and put that mid into items. So for example, the planning plans uh, into uh, their complexities. Now you can see that it didn't fill out all of them and I'll get to those when I get to that task and explain um, what that complexity is about. 26.2, plant schedule, the sheets are no longer produced. So there's no hours given for those in the plant schedule. It will, that task will probably be removed um, sometime in the near future out of these forms. 26.3, general notes and pay items. So we go over here, it's a general note and pay item sheet required. One or we'll say yes it is, so we put that one. Uh, again, so this is what is the estimated complexity of the general note and PAM. So this is based on task complexity, not the planting plan complexity. And it's either simple, standard, or complex. Simple being not many notes or pay items, or maybe they're very generic versus a complex is there's a lot of unique notes uh, and uh, it's gonna be more time, right? More staff hours required. So we'll say complex. All right, and I'll recommend 12 hours. And we could either agree with the 12 hours or, or maybe we say that, uh, you know, yeah, it, it needs to be more than that. Maybe it'll take uh, 16 hours, two days. All right, 26.4 is the planting plans for linear projects. So this is linear projects um, going down roadways, corridors. Uh, 26.5 would be for nonlinear projects. And it says right there, stormwater facilities, rest areas, interchanges, toll plazas. So in this case, for linear projects, we're looking for linear projects in length and miles. And uh, it goes out to a couple decimal places. So the length of the project where planning plans occur, we'll just say we have two and a half miles. We already have established the complexity of mid, so that carries down and it recommends there. Let's say we also have uh, uh, a two and a half mile corridor project, but then we also are doing uh, maybe an interchange, we can enter in the number of areas of an interchange. Let's just say it's 20 acres. This is in acres. There we go. All right. 26.6 is the planting details. So estimated number of planting details. And then this task includes any notes required. Let's just say we have eight details. All right. And there's no complexity associated with that. 26.7, irrigation plans for linear projects. So this is, uh, let's just say we're gonna irrigate just a mile of that two and a half mile corridor. And then we'd select the complexity of the irrigation. Let's say it's simple. And then we're gonna irrigate the uh, 20 acres. All right. 
we'll say that that is simple as well. And it's recommending the hours uh, to get your initial estimate, and then we'll have to negotiate from there. 26.9 is the irrigation details. We got six. All right. And then 26.10, hardscape plans. So are hardscape plans required for this project? Yes or no? If it is a yes, you'd also have to determine uh, what the complexity of that is. In this case, we'll say there's no hardscape for this example, so we'd leave it at zero, and uh, it'll be zero hours. And then we've got our maintenance plan, 2611. It's a maintenance plan required for the project, yes or no? Say yes, we'll say it's standard. All right, and that's basically how you sub up, sum up um, and get a quick calculation telling uh, the forms some information about your project and it'll get you know, a quick calculated estimate based on the guidelines. Then you'll have to uh, determine what your project, if it's accurate um, and, and negotiate from there. 26.12 is QAQC and 13 is supervision. Um, these can be turned off, uh, you put a zero in here, but default they will be on and they're based on 5%. So you can see it'll calculate 5% of the um, technical subtotal and it'll do that for each each cell right here just like this. If you do not want to use 5%, you can use it uh, something, another percentage you could use. Let's just say you could use 3% or 7%. If you use 7%, you can put it in the documentation. Calculate what 7% of the value is, and you can input it right here in this negotiated cell. All right, you can do the same for supervision. That'll all sum up and carry down um, to this, and this will carry over to the summary tab for distribution. Again, my contact information is right here. Please reach out to me with any questions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks.